Um, I'm Andrew, and along with Chester, um, this is, I'm going to be talking about things that we've been thinking about over this past year as we've been seeing the sorts of technologies that have been coming down the pipeline at our studio and thinking about how can we best use those to accomplish our learning goals in the classroom at Reed College. Um, but I guess to start off, um, I'd like you, I mean, maybe you've already done this if you've been here a while, um, but take a couple minutes and chat with the people around you. Um, you know, probably you'd want to say your name and maybe what you do, but also how long you've been using R, what you use R for, and then get to this, this idea of, in terms of collaborative data analysis, is this something that you engage in? If so, what sort of tools do you use? What's your workflow? Um, uh, what do you use for uh, sharing code, reviewing work, and providing feedback? So please just take maybe three, five minutes on that. Yeah, so to, to give you some context of where I'm coming from with this, um, I teach at Reed College. I've been here just since, since September, so I'm new to this, new to Portland, new to Reed. Um, it's an undergraduate-only institution. Um, there are... Chester and I are the only two statisticians at this college, um, and there are lots of students that come through and need statistics. Um, one reason that they really need statistics is Reed has, uh, I've learned it has many things that distinguish it from other liberal arts colleges, um, but one, one of them is, is this. So this is, um, it's called the thesis tower. And you can go in there, if you visit Reed, go to the library, and then just ask for directions to the thesis tower. You go up this little spiral staircase, you end up here. And uh, this is a, a bit of library that every book on the shelf is a thesis written by a Reed senior. So every student, anytime you've met a Reed graduate, they've written a thesis, it's bound, it's in this room. Um, and some of these, I've just sat through my first week of Reed theses, oral defenses, um, and they are... The ones that I've seen in statistics are at the quality of the master's theses that I saw um, when I was in graduate school in statistics. So there's lots of sophisticated statistical data analysis techniques that are being used, that are being used to fill the, the walls of these shelves in this room every year, uh, but we have limited capacity to actually get these students lots of experience working with data. Um, in fact, we only have really two data analysis courses. Um, and that's really the only latitude that we have to try to get as much data analysis and statistical so sophistication in as possible. So as we're, uh, as Chester and I went about thinking through these data analysis courses that we're going to offer this last year, the two questions that we, we tried to figure out how to answer on the computational side, okay, these students, they're going to be doing data analysis. We want them to be team-based, be doing team-based data analysis, and we want it to be reproducible. We want it to be best practices. So... Most times that you're teaching intro stat at, at universities across the country, it's absolutely not reproducible using point-and-click software um, that's maybe designed strictly for education. It's not useful after you leave intro stat. It's painful. Um, so we're using R and trying to figure out how you can get students doing as much with R with as low barriers as possible. The other thing that we're trying to figure out, this is kind of the... Uh, the sad thing that teachers have to think about, essentially, how do you do grading? How do you provide feedback? Um, and this is, this is important to educators, but both of these, these questions, I think, are more general. You know, if you're doing data analysis, these ideas of facilitating reproducible team-based data analysis, it's really important also just providing feedback um, on the work that people are doing. So the tools that we came up with to answer these two questions were R, the R Studio, and GitHub. Um, so I'll talk about kind of two workflows that we developed, um, one for each of these classes, introductory statistics, and the second is intermediate data analysis. The, the, the particular flavor of the course tends to change every year. Last year it was called data science, this year it was called statistical learning, um, but essentially it's just an intro and intermediate data analysis course. So a quick background on the intro course. It's if you took intro stat, it's probably pretty similar to that one. It's, there's no prereqs. Um, it draws from students across the college, uh, biology, economics, political science. Um, these are often the students that want to take the more rigorous version because it's in the mathematics department. Um, so maybe more motivated than the average student, but wide variety of backgrounds. In terms of the topics that we cover, it's pretty standard. Data collection, visualization, 
the whole grab bag of frequentist inference, a little bit of Bayesian inference, and kind of ending with the capstone of regression. Um, what we have the students doing in terms of computation and data analysis kind of takes two forms. One is uh, weekly labs that they're doing in R, um, first on their own and then in, in partners and pairs. And then, uh, and then a final group project. And a final group project is done in teams of three and four. It's pretty open-ended. It's find a data set that is in a context that's interesting to you that has essentially many columns that you could fit, sensibly fit multiple regression to and do so and then walk us through it in a presentation. You know, so you have, just to do that, you have three students that are really new to R, some not even that much experience with computing, trying to juggle R scripts, data sets, R markdown files um, to keep this cohesive uh, <laughs> enterprise going. Uh, so it's, it's kind of tricky to, to do that coordination. The intermediate course, Pretty similar, just a little bit more advanced. We require regression and programming, some exposure to regression, some exposure to programming, doesn't have to be R. Kind of the same group of students. And then the topics are kind of take off from regression, modern regression, lasso and ridge, but then getting into more statistical learning techniques, algorithmic models, principal component analysis, and unsupervised learning stuff, clustering, k-means and hierarchical clustering. Um, in terms of the computation side here, there are weekly or sometimes bi-weekly labs in R and the final group project, kind of a similar setup. Okay, so, you know, these are the two, two things that we're trying to figure out. What are the tools that we can put in place to facilitate um, that collaborative um, environment so that students can do those, those two last things? All right, so, yeah, that was walking through the courses. Now just... Seems like everybody's familiar with this, so I won't spend much time at all on it, but GitHub and, uh, and our studio, right? So GitHub is that. It's a web-based Git repository hosting service. The Git is the version control. That's the software that's tracking all of the changes. You're changing files. Um, it's tracking changes in a repository, which is a directory that can contain, well, code, but really any sorts of file also has this web-based component. So the web-based means that uh, it's kind of like Facebook for coders, right? You can friend people, you can follow them effectively, um, but you can easily share code and collaborate, uh, contribute to bigger projects. Um, so it's really good for more complex project management. All right, so in terms of what our studio is, uh, that's a big part of our studio, but more general, um, our studio is this. It's an integrated development environment for R. Um, is there anybody that uses R that doesn't use our studio? One person. Okay. It's amazing the degree to which like people have forgotten that R is actually the language. They think that it's a software package called our studio that does everything um, because it really has become so powerful. Um, and the specific parts of the power that we're going to leverage here is the integration that they've started building in with Git and GitHub, and um, the differentiation between the desktop and the, uh, the server-side version, specifically the server-side version. It's really helpful. All right, so, right, this is what, let me see. Well, actually, so, right, that, that's our studio desktop. If you haven't used our studio server, uh, it, that's our studio server. So it looks the exact same. Um, all that you do is you go to a browser, you type in the URL of wherever your serv server is, you go through a login scheme, and then you have, you have your R session. You have your same four panes, your editor in the upper left, the console in the lower, lower left, your environment in the upper right, and your file directory in the bottom right. Okay, so those are kind of the, the tools that we're drawing from here. Um, to give you a sense of how we use this, our Studio server in are um, introductory labs. Pretend for a moment that you are, you are a new freshman at Reed. Your, let's see, first day of class is on Monday. Tuesday, you come into your lab session. It's gonna be you and maybe 10 others. You'll sit down at a computer and be directed to this URL. When you get to that URL, all that you have to do is type in your email information. Um, your read email and the password that they give you. Once you do that, you get into your own account on the read server. So, you know, there's no issues with having to install 
software, even having to have your own computer. Um, you can access it from the lab, you can access it from home. Um, once you're in, uh, there's, there's lots of ways to do this, but if you're thinking about how am I actually going to do this particular lab, you'd start off by going um, to the File New menu and then uh, create a new Markdown file from a template. So this is something that we could talk quite a bit about, uh, and this has been an area that there's been quite a bit of development at our studio with uh, in the last six months or so, a year. Um, and that's the idea that you can preload in a package templates um, and these templates can be incredibly rich, um, kind of pre-made documents. So if you're doing an analysis, a particular type of analysis all over the place, you can kind of hard code it as a template, um, the fundamentals of it, and then distribute it for wide use and then people tweak it to their needs. So this is a really good fit for, um, for a lab report effectively. So in this case, they just click new from template and then you'll see what is that? The, Right, the top one, our Markdown Lab Report, that's what we're using. You can also see we actually, um, we're even distributing our uh, tests this way through templates. Um, okay, so you, you click on the template, and then once you have your template, so just go through this, you've, you've signed in, you have your template, which is like a blank lab report, and then you go back and forth between the actual lab itself, which is hosted online, just kind of walking you through a data analysis, and then typing in your answers into the template. Okay, so you're doing that, you're on the server, you're filling out this lab report, but then the question comes, okay, now how are the students going to turn their work back in? Um, right, because it's on the server now, and usually the way that colleges do like digital submissions is through a course management software like Moodle or Blackboard. I get really frustrated working with those pieces of software. Um, they have amazing power, they have amazing complexity. Um, they've just gotten really Baroque. Um, and I really want very simple functionality out of this uh, course management software. Um, so realizing that actually there's a way through this new shared project feature that we could completely just remove needing to go through course management. Because um, all we needed it for was submitting these digital documents and we can do it directly now. Um, yeah. No, no. So in terms of setting up the server, um, you know, we had, uh, we have someone in, in IT at Reed that set it up. Um, our studio has put out like a very thorough how-to PDF um, that you can walk through. Um, I guess something to say too, um, the shared project feature is on our studio server pro which is free for academic use and definitely not free for non-academic use. Um, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're interested in playing around, we can chat afterwards and, um, and I can show you around at least our server. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's definitely a consideration, um, just getting it all set up. I know you can also get these set up. There's um, at Amherst College back in Massachusetts. I think they run all of their stuff through the cloud. So they, they, they're not even working with anybody at their college. They just did it completely solo shows. They have an RStudio server in the cloud that they just distribute to their students. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, I mean, because there's such close because there's such, such close parity between the server and the desktop, I mean, they really quickly, like if they take another stats class, they'll, they will just go ahead and download it, install it, and they're like, oh, it's like the same thing. Um, the shared project thing is different, right? I mean, that definitely needs to be server side. Uh, but you'll see that we kind of, we use the shared server for the collaboration. We lean on it entirely in the intro course and in the second course, trying to kind of transition that functionality to GitHub. Um, so that hopefully they can ride GitHub off into their future careers instead of the server. Are there other questions? Okay. So, right, shared projects, how does this work? Um, if you use, or if, if you're familiar with using the, the, the R project feature, just a way of bundling up all of your, your code in R Studio, student A would sign onto the server and create an R 
uh, a project that contains, you know, this is going to contain the R markdown file, their lab, re lab report. Maybe they'll have separate R scripts, usually not. Uh, they'll have that R project file, and then they might have in this uh, directory there um, the data set. Often we just keep these in packages. Um, so when they go, the student goes, they finish doing all their changes to the markdown file. How do they actually turn it in? All that they have to do is share it with the teacher. And I'll show just, it's a really simple functionality. I'll show it in just a minute. Um, and what that does is it gives the teacher, whoever it's shared with, full read write to everything that's in that project. Um, and so we use it to have the teacher and when we have graders log in, you know, after the due date, basically just sequentially log into all the projects that have been shared with the grader and uh, provide comments in the actual markdown file. I mean, you can imagine, you know, creating a separate .md file or .txt file that's like feedback, or you could just, you know, alter their original document in comments or however you choose to do it. It's also super handy if you have, um, I mean, so I've also used this with colleagues, not students, but colleagues that are just like they, you know, they're a biologist that really wants to do this cool type of plot that just like Excel won't do for them. And you can give them this block of ggplot2 code and it's beautiful. Um, and so kind of giving them that, giving them a login to the server, but then as they have questions, they can send you emails and, and you can kind of go back and forth on the server directly instead of emailing stuff back and forth, yeah? It currently doesn't. Yeah, so this whole feature is pretty um, in development. Um, you'll see that the link to Git and GitHub is a little bit uh, clunkier than it, I think, will be in one year, six months even. Because that's another thing that they listed when JJ Lair, it is, his talk was saying, like, first let's get the shared feature out there, then try to get the GitHub interface a little bit closer. You know, right now it's it's just bare bones um, integration. Okay, so in addition though to sharing the teacher like this is useful for grading, yes, but it's also useful for collaboration. So these students at the end when they're doing their group reports, um, one student creates the, the report uh, project, but then shares it with uh, their two students, uh, teammates, and they're able to all work on it together. And then the teacher is able to go and answer questions or provide feedback at the end. Okay, so quick demo of that. Um, let's see, how do I do this? Okay, so so if you've never used the server before, by default it will log you into your last session, but they actually in the most recent version have this kind of portal thing here that's your kind of landing page. These are all the projects that have been shared with me uh, that I need to grade. Um, but if let's let's pretend for a second that I'm a student, so um, I'm doing a new lab, so I do new new project, and this is going to be in a new directory, an empty project. I'm going to call it Lab One. Okay, so now we have this fresh directory, Lab One. I'm going to create my lab report from a markdown template. So we have kind of some bare bones stuff there such that you can knit it and, you know, they have a sense of like, yes, you're supposed to fill in your name, you're supposed to fill in your uh, name of the lab, and then work through the different exercises. Uh, so say, say the first exercise has them doing a plot. So, you know, they might do something like that which, you know, they could, we always tell them to be sure to knit it so that it looks the way that you want it to look. And there we go, we have a nice plot now in their lab report. Um, and once they're done, say that, that was the entire lab, how do, you, how do you share it? Well, sharing it is as simple as going up here to kind of the project tab and clicking share project. Um, and now it, ha it pulls from the name of all registered users on the server. So I can add Chester over here. Um, there we go, so I can add him. And now he's logged into the server and he should be able to 
um, you know, from his landing page, see that he has a recently shared project with him and click on it and it should dump him into the same project. So you can see actually now we see Chester is logged in here um, and he can go in and provide feedback for me. Um, you know, so it can be done asynchronously. Um, that's how usually how grading would be done. Like you set a deadline, just say don't touch your work after a given day, a uh, given time, uh, and then after that the grader is going to go in and start providing feedback. This can also be used, you know, synchronously. Uh, um, and I should provide a caveat here. So you're right, it's kind of like Google Docs. It's pretty slick. Um, I think it has great potential. Um, it's a little rusty now. Um, so rusty in that once you have lots of people playing in these, um, like so you have groups working on project together, you have four people logging in and out, changing files. Um, they just, it doesn't seem like the protocols for how saving and overriding is work, that that's all worked out yet. Uh, there's, it's pretty well documented students losing work that they've done, even though it seems like they've done everything. But did you have problems with that, Will? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, Will is one of my students in Stat Learning, and so he got to experience this. Um, so it's kind of with, I guess, you know, I want to talk about this because I, I do think it has promise. It's, it's a surprisingly rough project for our studio, or um, product, rather. Um, but it's, I guess, you know, this, these labs, they're pretty brief, so like the, the stakes of if something is completely lost, um, it's, uh, it's not horrible. Uh, I wouldn't recommend putting, if you have some huge project, multi-month long with colleagues running it through an RStudio project just yet if it's not protected by Git. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely, it, you have that on the server there, and I'll show that in just, just a moment. Um, okay, so that's the, the basic idea. Pros and cons, um, it removes basically Moodle and Blackboard having to deal with course management, um, and they don't have to have any software. They just have one login, they do all of their analysis and get all their feedback through the same thing. We're kind of using it like a course management. I mean, we're, really we could, distribute syllabi this way, we could uh, run the whole course just through the server. Um, you know, and then it does accomplish that uh, goal to some degree of allowing them to work collaboratively, contemporaneously, um, hopefully while not losing all of their work. Um, yeah, but the cons are that it can be buggy and that you don't have version control. And when you don't have version control in a somewhat buggy system, that's unfortunate. All right, so let's go back to this. Questions that we need to answer, right? We're trying to think about, trying to get reproducible team-based data analysis and providing feedback on work using our studio and GitHub. So far, we've just been using our studio, but these problems in terms of version control are a little bit scary just doing shared projects. Hopefully, leveraging the more trustworthy version control system can help. And that's what we do, what we tried this last semester in our second course. Okay, so... Um, why do we think about using Git in our second course? It seems like most people are familiar with version control, so I won't really go into this. Um, not only is it saving all the work, but you do have the full record of project evolution. So if somebody asked a question about, do you have a record of who contributes what? On the shared projects, you don't. If they're doing it through commits, absolutely. So like if it's a Git, that like eternal prob problem of group projects where one member doesn't do that much work, the others get irritated. Um, but it's just kind of a he said, she said, unless you can just look at the commits. Um, you also know when commits are made. Uh, the way that it's set up, I get emails, which is, well, it's not surprising actually when, when the stuff gets done. Uh, it's entirely consistent with my own undergraduate experience. Um, and right, it, it can help weave in when you have lots of cooks in the kitchen. It can help be sure that that's sorted out. Uh, why GitHub? 
going that extra step. Oh, I guess that's duplicated, right? The multiple authors, that really comes in when we're integrating with GitHub. Um, and it's good for more complex project management, right? It has all these great tools like wikis, effectively, that you can establish and um, the issues and um, all sorts of things. Uh, and then finally, this really kind of goes even further into the reproducible transparent framework, right? If like, okay, at Read, we have our own little server if you log in with your email address, but you graduate, all this stuff is kind of locked away in the kingdom. Um, how do you show that? How do you bring that work to you know, future employers, to grad school? It's difficult. It's not at all difficult if it's on GitHub. It's a really easy way to do it. So there's lots of reasons to try to get students thinking about transitioning to GitHub before they graduate. Why wouldn't you do Git? Well, uh, because it can be a pain in the neck. It can be a pain in the neck if you're experienced with dealing with stuff like this and if you're new to computing, new to R, new to R Studio. Um, this is just one other piece of spinning machinery that's going to frustrate you. Um, so the thought was with these new tools that are coming out, maybe the barrier now is low enough that we can start using um, Git and GitHub earlier. Um, so I should say that this is kind of aspirational at this, at this point and that uh, I just kind of started using this in the stat learning class this spring. Um, it's going to take a second iteration before I feel like I've done it well, but I do think this has quite a bit of potential. Okay, so the thing that really makes this possible is this project that is a project hosted on GitHub <laughs> called GitHub Classroom. It's an open source project that basically is trying to get around, there's a bunch of educators realizing that it's really difficult to essentially ensure, um, you know, if it's student work, there's an issue of privacy. So GitHub, you know, unless you're paying for private repos, everything is available to everyone. But if they're turning, if they're taking their, say you do a, you put up a repository that's the final exam and then you tell students, oh, just fork it and then do a pull request and I'll grade your pull request, uh, then they can really easily just like go through the other pull request. It's just, you know, there's, uh, it's not quite set up for the classroom. So um, GitHub Classrooms tries to, tries to get into that um, and yeah, so I'll go through how exactly this works. And I'm going to go through this from the student perspective. Might be a little bit clearer. Okay, so instead of being a instead of being a first semester freshman on your second day, picture it's, I guess now January, you have one stats class under your belt, you're now in this course called statistical learning, and you're, well, let's say we're several weeks in, we have this cool lab on trees. You can click at the course website, it's going through classification tree, fitting it to kind of a made up data set as well as a real data set. Um, and to go about accepting the assignment, you click on the link of an invite. So this is an assignment that the instructor has previously prepared. All you have to do as a student is accept this assignment. Okay. I will do this one then. Exactly. Yeah, so from the teacher's side, this is an organization. Uh, the class is an organization. Um, and I guess I'll just go through, so I've already accepted earlier this afternoon, I did the lab seven. So I've accepted and when you've accepted it, this is the page that you get and it says, okay, you're ready to go. Check out your assignment, it's here and it gives you the link. And so here you can see what it did is it, uh, the, the read stat learning is the organization with the classroom here. And then it's, I've created kind of this, this base lab seven and then every student that accepts gets their own repo off of this. So mine's lab seven, Andrew P. Bray. And you'll see it contains three files, the RMD file, the HTML, just the knitted version, and the, uh, the data set, the CSV. And okay, so now I've accepted the assignment. It's kind of on this account that I have on an organization on GitHub. How do I get into the server? Um, so this is, this is a point at which you could either be using the server or the desktop. Um, we just had the students going through the server. So what they do, they go back over here. We'll just do it from here.
So this time it's going to be a new project from a version control repository to get one. And then it's asking for the repository URL. That's this guy here. So this step is effectively just linking the repo that the students just made to their account on the RStudio server. Oh, and I already did that, right? <laughs> okay, so we'll just flip over to my project. Uh, there it is. Okay, so now we have kind of where we were at last time. This is a shared, this is a project on the server, which means I can share it with anybody. I can share it with the instructor. I can share it with a teammate. Um, but we have this added Git pane, right? So if you've used the GitHub integration in our desktop, you're familiar with this. Um, you know, it basically can do the, the fundamental stuff in Git through the GUI. You also have access to a little shell if you'd like to use it, um, which is, yeah, you, I was kind of surprised that you can actually go through the shell on Git on your account on the server. It's, it's kind of surprising. Um, okay, but so you're, you're a student, you're looking at this lab. Let's take a look at this one. So it's on boosting using, I think this was classification trees, doing letter classification. Um, and okay. My first contribution as a student is to, right, this is my best of a, I, I tried really hard, hard. Most commits that I get, thankfully, are more substantive than that from students. Um, okay, let me walk that a little bit slower. So, you know, after you've changed the files, it's monitoring them and it's telling you that that file has changed and I've knitted it, so, so too has the HTML. Checking it is the equivalent of uh, staging it and then you can commit through the GUI, commit message, um, additional work. Okay. So now it's, so, you know, at this point, it's committed to the student's account on the server, um, but it's not yet synced over to me, the teacher that has, you know, rule over this repository at GitHub. So to do that, turning in the assignment is a push in this case, because they do have push ability. If we click over to here, we can see, okay, at least it pushed to this, to this repo. If I'm the teacher, I might instead choose to access that repository. They're here. This is lab seven. So these are all the students that have submitted their labs. My own. Just a quick way to link to that. Um, Okay, so now I have, you know, all the students work in a repository on GitHub and providing feedback can be done lots of different ways. You can imagine kind of going through the issue framework. Um, the way that I was experimenting with um, had to do with making comments, inline comments on commits. So I really like this ability in GitHub to be able to click on a commit in the commit history and get this nice diff showing what exactly has changed and then the ability to do inline. So, um, you know, I can say going to have to try harder next time. Okay, so what happens when I click send there or whatever, commit, co comment, um, it actually, it sends the student an email <laughs> uh, with exactly what I just said in a link to this page here and they can reply and it can start a conversation. Um, and I was not good at all at, at providing feedback um, this spring semester. This is really what I'd like to focus on the next time I teach this course, because this I think has huge potential. Like students traditionally just don't, you spend a lot of time on feedback and only a small amount of kind of what you're trying to communicate actually sinks in. Um, and one reason is just the time delay, right? So in the, the first framework in the intro class, the students submit their, their work, they do hands off, then the grader comes in and provides all their comments. But you know, they'll have to, if they really want to read the feedback, they'd have to click over to their old project. They're already onto a new lab um, and kind of read through and sift through the different feedback comments. This, 
I can provide, you know, very precise in line in your face because you're getting an email about it, um, feedback that's harder to ignore. Um, it does, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty slick. Um, yeah, so um, let me flip back. You can kind of think, I mean, the, the neat thing there, and this was, this was kind of surprising to me. Like, I knew that you could do this in our studio desktop, that you could sync a, a GitHub repository to an R project. That's been around for a while, but the fact that this can work through the server, so you can actually have people um, really notice they didn't have to use any Git. I mean, really, we're using bare functionality of Git at this point, um, but they are kind of built into that workflow, so you can imagine, um, uh, I mean, right now I'm using, I should say, I'm using Git. I recommend that they just commit once, which is pretty bad practice, that effectively they do all of their work, they commit, then they push. And that is helpful on my side because then I have all of their work on a single page and I can provide feedback more easily because um, all the commits are together. Um, but, you know, you can imagine trying to work out a system where, especially when they're working together, you're having them actually do sequential commits you know, maybe you could have each exercise be a separate commit to get them thinking about discrete uh, packets of code um, that I can then discreetly provide feedback on. That would just take more time on my, my end clicking through the, the interface here. Okay. Um, so just to go through that, the student workflow, accept an assignment, they copy that URL from GitHub from the repo, then they sign to the server then they create that new project and paste the URL. That's creating the link between these two tools. And then from then they can make changes to the files, do their work, and then in the Git pane do their commit, and then finally push to submit the work. From the teacher's perspective, um, on the back end you have to, there's a couple different ways to do this. The way that I ended up doing it was kind of creating my own repo on my own GitHub account, and then going into the classroom's organization and creating a new, they call it an assignment, kind of one of these general repos that will be stamped out for each of the students individually, and, um, and cloning over uh, the uh, existing material in that repo, and then posting that link. Once you post the link, you just kind of sit back and wait. You get emails from GitHub telling you when your students have submitted their work, <laughs> um, and then you can provide inline comments afterwards. Okay, so, yeah. Correct. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that step, the number two step, right, that would just be instead of, uh, no, oh, sorry, student side. Um, yeah, the fourth step there, they'd just be doing that on their own machine. The reason that I encourage them in this class to do it on the server is if you can think about, it's one thing to be submitting work in me, providing feedback, but then for the group project when they're actually collaborating, how to structure that. And essentially that's really wading into more Git, like I'm, they're gonna have to be resolving merge conflicts most likely, um, and not really wanting to tackle that. So preferring the collaboration to happen on the server side, unversion controlled, um, and then submitted in a version control. So it's kind of a, an in-between. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can absolutely think about, you know, for more students that have more experience with this, having the collaboration happen through GitHub, through getting GitHub instead of through the server. All right, so yeah, there's times when I was feeling like this was kind of my workflow that I'm putting the students through. This is Rube Goldberg's self-operating napkin, apparently. Um, it's like I want to do something very simple. I want them to work together and then turn in their work, and yet I'm having them go through like, okay, it's, it's not R, it's R through our studio, and then it's not just R, actually, it's an R markdown file, and it's actually through our markdown file template that's synced with GitHub through Git, no, actually not through GitHub, through GitHub Classrooms. Um, there are like so many spinning wheels in this um, that it, it kind of, you know, had me wondering if it's wise. It had me wondering if in, instead of being uh, questions in need of answers, these were actually answers 
in need of questions. Basically, I had two shiny new tools, and I wanted to figure out how I can cram this into the classroom. This was my best effort at it. This is kind of the cynical take on this. I think this is part of the story, but I also think there's enough good tools that have been built there that can be can be used well. Um, you know, I think the, the final deliverable of getting students to GitHub before they graduate um, is, is really important and just thinking how can you do that in two courses maybe for students that have no computing background ahead of time and teaching all statistics right uh, along the way. It's tough, so we need all the technological help that we can get. Um, uh, from the first semester, yeah, um, and it was Mixed students tend to not see, so I see like 10 different technologies. They just see one technology generally. Um, frustration over the lack of uh, just the losing work over the shared projects, but actually kind of rolling with it. I mean, frustration, but still it seemed to work. I mean, frustrating as it was. Um, from a grading perspective, I think it's way easier than going through course management systems. Um, yes, yeah, some, yeah, 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 it is getting better and I think it will get, will get even better, um, yeah, uh, so just some thoughts about this RStudio GitHub integration pros. Um, I think that one of the real big advantages is that if you're thinking about really wanting precise feedback, that inline commenting through commits, you can do the same thing through pull requests is, is super, super valuable. Um, it does provide, if fully fleshed out, you, doing the collaboration on the Git side instead of on the shared project side, um, you'd have the tools to sort out the muck through the commit history. Um, if stuff goes wrong in the collaboration. Um, I do think it's a really good first step into Git, just getting them to set up a Git account, um, have some, have it populated with some repos that's showing their work. Um, and, uh, and something that, <laughs> uh, so actually for the statistical learning class this evening, I'll be sending out the final, and the final is going to be for the students to uh, replicate another student's uh, final project. And through Git and GitHub, this is actually pretty darn easy because um, those, those repos are available. Um, and then having them, you know, do kind of a variant on the analysis, uh, altering some of the plots that they've done, um, providing a critique. Um, the cons, it's, if you're doing the collaboration on the shared project side, that's what's still a little bit buggy. Um, right now, the way that I'm doing this, there is, it's unclear the functionality, like should it be done by RStudio server, should it be done by GitHub? Um, and then finally, the issues with privacy, like it, it I really just haven't sorted through this enough, but um, you know, the idea of, I need to think through more what the benefits are of having student work be private. Because um, you can imagine a model where you don't really even have to go through classrooms, where you're having all of their work is public, all of their peers' work is public, they can cite their peers if they use their peers' work. Um, and, you know, this just being one of many tools of assessment so that it's not like your entire grade is going to be based on this. Um, yeah, so things to think about there. Yeah? Yeah, that's a really good thought. Um, for the labs, this is all public data, so we didn't have to deal with that, but for senior theses, if they're done in this way, so um, students are working with either like corporate proprietary data or scientific proprietary, like the primary authors, like millions of dollars were invested into this and they want to get the paper out before right, it goes, goes to everyone, that sort of situation, so definitely need to think that through. Um, so Will, um, his thesis, he just finished up here and his thesis was working with uh, proprietary data from a company here in Portland. Um, do you want to say how you handled that with your GitHub integration? Okay, so I think that's pretty much all I had. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to make plugs for 
two things that are happening at Reed in the next six months, I guess. Uh, the more interesting thing is happening in the fall. <laughs> uh, Hadley Wickham will be coming, is it in September? Middle of October. Um, and we'll be in touch, I guess, with Scott. I think he has some interest in speaking to this group, so. Oh, you've already been in touch with him. Okay, great. Yeah, um, so that should be really neat. Um, the other thing is if you are um, teaching stats, we invite you to join us at Reed uh, just pretty soon, uh, May 19th. Uh, there's, a, there's a conference called ECOTS, the Electronic Conference of Teaching Statistics, and it's going all of this, this week, uh, the week of May 19th. And what uh, Chester and I will be doing is kind of, this is our first try at this, it's kind of going to be a watch party, it's kind of going to be, um, we'll be curating essentially what we find to be the, the best quality stuff that's coming through before Thursday, including Andrew Gellman's keynote. And then we're set up in a projector room at Reed, um, just for one day, kind of watching the greatest hits and also having local discussions about the sort of stuff that we're doing with teaching stats. So if you're interested in coming, please come by and either introduce yourself to Chester or myself. Yeah. Okay. One of right, do we have? I, I haven't looked into that. I had a, are there any last general questions? Otherwise, we can just kind of disperse. If you have to leave, you have to leave. Otherwise, you can chat. Yeah. Um, I guess on I. I I think I've taught maybe for four years now using the server, um, so I kind of have a hard time remembering what it was like, or whenever it first came out. Um, I, I mean, I think, like, you only have them so many hours, it is a zero-sum game in terms of what you choose to spend your time on. I think getting them doing, using R and using Markdown, I mean, that the gains in terms of saying, you know, you are future scientists, Anything that you do needs to be needs to be reproducible. That alone is like a huge learning objective now in stats um, that wasn't there, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, and this is what you need to get there. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely always a consideration: is what did we lose in this? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I, that, that like crossed my mind for a bit for at least um, for projects having students um, push it to our pubs and then you know having other students provide feedback because there's like a little you know comment section after um, you know it's super lean. That's really nice, a nice feature of it. Um, yeah, I. I guess it doesn't have, you know, that really is just largely, I mean, that would be a way to turn in their work in a completely public way. Um, so, you know, shared projects, at least it can be not public. It, to my knowledge, I mean, our pubs, it's open to the entire internet, yeah. Right? Um, so I think intro students, their first time in our, um, our studio. I, I had students actually, uh, I had a take home exam uh, when I was teaching a regression course and the student um, published their, uh, unknowingly published their finished exam to our pubs. Another student submitted an exam that was the same exam, um, and it was pretty, everything was like timed, time stamped, so it was completely clear what had happened. But, so there are dangers to the transparency. 
Yeah. So I think uh, we actually, you know, in normal, like, how long did it take to, you know, if there's somebody in IT that's running the server for us, how much, like, management overhead was there and having to go back and forth, being sure stuff was set up. Um, there's the setting up, but once it's set up, I mean, I think it pre-populates from the, I mean, they have it reading in the registrar's list for students that are registered for the courses. So if you're, there's kind of a complication there and that because of that system, if you're not registered, you can't log in and you need to log in on the second day, but we have plenty of students that are just shopping around that aren't registered, but just sit there kind of twiddling their thumbs on the first lab. So, I mean, there are, there are ways around that, but the whole getting all the users authenticated, um, does take some, some scheme has to be set up there. Okay, thanks very much.